All right, guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the shade. I love this thing. Check this out. Perfect shade in a perfect square. I am so glad I bought that shade. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I forget the name brand. I picked it up locally, and uh, it's just a cloth that gives a heck of a lot of great shade. Look at that. It is just too bright out here to work without it. So anyway, today we're working on a new machine. This is a Snapper 28 inch cut with a 11 horse Briggs on it. And Jesus, stop kicking the damn thing. And according to the owner, <coughs> he replaced the spark plug. Uh, I forget what all he did to it. He Looks like he put a new carburetor on it. Uh, he doesn't exactly know what's going on. He said when he got here that it started, but it would only run for a few seconds. And I said, okay, show me, because that's what I always tell him. Show me what's going on for you so I know what to look for. So we put the brake on, or he put the brake on. I gotta remember where it is. That's for the blades. Oh, here it is, lock it in place. These are pretty basic. They're pretty cool, but they're pretty basic. Uh, decks up there. We got the throttle here. Uh, this is for neutral, reverse, and gear. So let's make sure it's in neutral. And uh, he went to pull it, and it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't fire. It wouldn't do anything. So I did a couple of checks on it, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what I found. I did not find the issue, but uh, I only spent about five minutes doing it. So I just want to show you it does not start. Oh, and now it tries to start. Okay, good. Because what I did, <clears throat> just like him, was I tried to pull it. He pulled it several, several times. It would not start. I did the same thing after he left. It would not start. And uh, I couldn't figure out why. So first I sprayed a little bit of carb spray in there. Thinking, all right, it's probably okay nothing i got zero when i sprayed carb spray into the carburetor usually you can get it to bark so i checked spark and it had spark and i pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled my brains out and i could not get it to start so clearly i thought all right there's got to be a switch or something i'm missing blah 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 and i didn't put any more time into it because I wanted to film it. Now we got fuel. The fuel smells fine. Clearly we have good compression, which I checked. There's good compression. And I thought I was going to have to dig, dig, dig. So, since it started for me just now, and would not stay running, that tells me it's a fuel issue. It's not a safety switch. It's not anything out of the ordinary. It's just going to be a fuel issue. So, give me five minutes to regroup. I was going to run you through compression checks and spark checks, and I don't have to do that. So, just to show you, I'm going to use some carb spray. Go into the carb. A little bit of fuel. And it should bark. Put the choke on. Usually on the fourth pull. And I'm getting absolutely nothing. This tank is kind of in the way. I mean, chances are, even with a new carburetor, 
something's wrong with the car. But the fact, oh, well, there's your problem. Okay. I know what the problem is now. Whew. Man, I hate pulling them things. Getting too old for this. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. That is fuel. This thing is full of fuel. Hey, my finger's wet with fuel. I wish I could show you. In there. That is full of fuel, which means it's flooded. So, I could pull till the cows come home. That's not going to help. Behind your air filter, right here is an elbow. This elbow is what draws air into your carburetor. And I think what's happening is that the new carb, the needle is not seating correctly inside there. So instead of the float is in the down position in the bowl and then as the bowl fills up the float pushes up and it pushes a needle up and stops the fuel from flowing. And that's not what's happening. It's overflowing the top of the carburetor and it's leaking out. And it's leaking out so much that it's filling up this elbow with fuel which means the carburetor's got way too much in it. So what I'm going to do is give it a few minutes, let it dry out, and then I'm going to come out here and pull it, and it should start just the way it did in the beginning of this video. If your machine is flooded, it's not going to start no matter what you do. I'm going to take the spark plug out. Uh, I did that last time, and it wasn't the issue. But I'm going to let this thing dry out. I only have about 90 minutes before the rain comes and I'm gonna see what happens. All right, I'm working on limited time as always. We got a hurricane coming in a couple of days. So I trying to get a couple of these machines out here. So let's just do that. All of these nuts and whatnot are all different sizes. So that's always fun. So let's deal with that. Washers off. Why won't that come off? hands full of bullshit okay worked on that with a screwdriver doesn't seem to want to come off those bolts so the next thing I'm gonna do till I figure it out finish taking this damn cover off it really is gonna be one of those days where nothing goes right when that happens, sometimes you just got to work through it. That stupid pull cord should have just came right off. I didn't want to. I checked the oil. It's a little high. All right, what else do we have here on this piece of garbage? We're gonna have some kind of screw that is holding it to the intake elbow. So let me find that. All right, now, so I wouldn't lose them. And when you get frustrated, sometimes it's better to do stuff that's easy. I went ahead and put all my nuts back on this pull cord on here. And then I took my oil funnel there and was able to work that out and take off my cover. Now, 
I don't know that you'll be able to see it. I checked the oil. The oil is a little bit high, but it doesn't smell like gas. It looks like oil. So that's not going to be the issue. It's not overflowing enough to go into the crankcase. It is just flooding the carburetor at the moment. So let's see real quick. Okay, I am frustrated having a day. And I'm worrying more about making a video for you guys than I am using my brain and all my years of experience. Now I know for a fact that this is a fuel issue because when I pulled it, it started. I cannot get it to replicate no matter how many times I pull it because we are flooding. So instead of bullshitting around and trying to worry about what my video looks like, as you guys know, I don't like doing that. I'm not a filmmaker. I'm gonna take the carburetor off because there's only two things that can be happening here. Either it's getting flooded or it's got water in it. Why it would have water in it? Well, I don't know how this guy keeps his machine. He could keep it outside. Who knows? Now, of course, the socket I need is missing, so hang on. All right, there's another 10 minutes well spent. It's really frustrating that everything is just piled on top of itself. And there's nothing I can do about that. I probably will not have a shop for a long time. And for those of you that detect a bit of anger in my voice in many of my videos, I get very frustrated, like, very quickly. And I don't understand why. I'm very happy. I love where I live. I love how I live. I have no idea why I'm so frustrated and literally I could get I get frustrated in, in two minutes over the stupidest stuff it's all repetitive stuff my tools aren't where they're supposed to be I don't have any place to work it's boiling hot at 97 degrees today here in Florida I got a hurricane coming I got a ton of work to do the rains coming today hasn't rained in a long time but I get frustrated and I just don't know why. I wish I knew. Because then I could stop it. So now we need a pair of pliers to get this fuel line off. Apparently that linkage just come right off by itself. Fuel line is off. This linkage goes on that side along with the spring. And then this, I usually take this out with it. It goes into a little slot right there. Now let's just see what's in this carburetor because he claims, and it certainly looks it, it's a brand new carburetor. Now see, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. There we go. Come on. What I'm looking for now is to get this liquid out and see if there's water in there. Of course, it doesn't want to come out. And it should, it, it was full up into the elbow, so it should have tons more water than that. And, uh, all right, of course bring out all the tools I'm supposed to need. I just, I just want to show you what's in the carburetor. That's all. Here we go again. No, I'm not cutting this out. I'm an angry fucker. All right.
course the screws don't want to come out and if you mess them up <coughs> you're all kinds of messed up okay great let's get the vice grips now many of you will work on these soft screws with screwdrivers so you screw them up real bad and you have no choice but to break out the vice grips. Me, as soon as I find that even on a brand new carburetor they're in so fucking tight you can't get them out, I go straight for the vice grips because that way I can get them out without messing up the head. And then when I put it back together, I can loosen, you know, a human amount instead of whatever possessed someone to put them in so tight. And you could say, ah, it could be corrosion. This is a brand new carburetor. You can look at it and tell it's a brand new carb. He told me it was a brand new carb. But these screws are in so damn hard, can't get them out. So go right for the vice grips, guys. That way, once you break them free, you can get this thing apart, put it back together, and you won't be hunting down new screws. The fact that this carburetor is empty is the exact opposite of what should be. That float bowl wasn't sealing or isn't sealing should have filled this bowl full I absolutely despise these carburetors they are such a pain it should have filled this entire float bowl full and yet it's empty and instead, I had liquid in the elbow above the carburetor, which tells me that was not our problem. It is not a needle and seat problem. It seems to me Yeah, this carburetor is dead empty. All I got out of it was this little tiny bit. And I don't see any water in it. So water in the carb was not our problem. Our problem is we didn't get any gas in the carburetor. And these stupid things, these big ass gaskets that never go back where they're supposed to when they're wet, now that it's come apart, I know will not seal. So instead of being a 10 minute job, it's taken me a half an hour to get this far, only to find out that now I have to wait even longer for this gasket to shrink up when it dries up. I have to put it in the sun because it's way too big. They swell up and it's not going to work. really 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 hate these carburetors have I said that before and my guess at this point is why can't a 10 minute job just be a 10 minute job okay I cannot put this back together over this stupid gasket carburetor's brand new it's clean and it's empty okay there wasn't enough fuel in there to do anything so there's our problem my guess at this point is that we're not getting enough fuel out of the tank so it's either clogged or collapsed or something and let me see if I can move the camera and show you what is coming out of this thing if we're getting flow So we have a brand new car that is not letting fuel 
go into itself the float is not working the way it's supposed to Okay, with the float closed, with the float closed, I shouldn't be able to blow through there. And I can't, except the float has to be way up there. The float is supposed to be level like that. Okay, and with it in the down position, I can blow through it. So I don't know yet why it's not letting any fuel into the bowl. I'm gonna have to wait until this until this gasket dries out and hope that it goes back into shape. Put it back together, put fuel to it, and there's no drain screw on this one. Normally on the bottom, right here in the center, is a drain screw, and of course, there's none in this. Uh, how do I test this? How do I test this before I put this back together? this back together and that's not going to work because that's not being held together in the gas that's not there okay so all I know is that this is a stupid problem to have over a $27 carburetor at best Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. It doesn't matter. I know what I'm gonna do. Hang on. Get you reset, clean up some of these tools. Okay, so the carburetor is off. All I did was put my top cover. There's the carburetor. I put my top cover back on. I put my oil dipstick back in the way. And we're gonna test this thing real quick. Now it should start. There it is, on the fourth pull, just like it's supposed to. So, the carburetor here, the carburetor, even though it's new, and this happens from time to time, this, uh, this looks like it's a Briggs carb, it's an OEM carb, but it is not letting fuel into the bowl. If there's no fuel going in, it cannot feed into the carburetor. And on top of that, for some reason, we have extra fuel in the elbow. So somehow it's not filling up the carb bowl at the bottom, and instead it's just running through here coming out into the elbow and sitting there now that's not something that you see very often but what that shows me or what that tells me is there's something wrong on the inside of this carburetor and I even though he spent probably 150 bucks on this carburetor because these OEM carbs are expensive some people do, some people say OEM for life. I never buy these things. They're 140, 150 bucks, and you still have issues the same as you do with the $20 ones on Amazon. But that is me, that is my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to 
listen to what I say, okay? But I do this for a living. So I am going to replace this carburetor. I'm going to give this thing back to him. I'm gonna tell him before I order the new one that it's the carburetor that's the problem. And instead of him spending $200 paying me an hourly rate to try to figure out what's wrong with this carburetor, I'm gonna buy one off of Amazon for 25 bucks. I'm gonna spend 10 more minutes installing it and he's gonna be back in business. That's just the way I do things. So I will let you know when the new carburetor comes in and we get this thing running. Well, I wanna interrupt this video to talk to you for just a second. Um, since the last clip you saw before I started right now, a lot happened. As you know, longtime viewers of the channel know that I live in Florida. Uh, we had Hurricane Idalia come through and she reached Cat 4 status before making landfall up in the Big Bend area of Florida. Now, we were to take almost a direct hit where I live. Um, I spent a lot of time cleaning the place up, moving things around. I just want to say to the people who actually got impacted by Hurricane Adalia, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Um, good luck rebuilding. I hope that everyone's okay. So far, we haven't heard of anyone, any lost lives, which is good. It's just property damage, and those of us in Florida, we're used to that. So I had to clean up. I just took a couple of big, uh, those are commercial grade garbage bags, just to keep rain out of that thing because I had the carburetor off. And uh, I'm actually standing where my man cave or my house used to be. And I took it over there because there are no trees around it. All the trees that are close on this next property over there and here, these are above where my home was. So I moved it to the opposite side of the yard where there were no trees anywhere close enough that, that trees could blow over and crush it. And uh, I actually put some spikes in the ground that are three feet long, special hurricane spikes that corkscrew and cut into the ground and strapped that thing down with chains so it couldn't blow over. And uh, that's what I spent the last few days doing. Then we waited out the storm, and thankfully uh, the storm mostly passed us by. We got a little bit of wind. We got a little rain. A few thousand people went without power. I have gas generators, gas and propane. I have solar generators, solar panels. We're prepped for World War III, so we were perfectly fine. The house is cinder block house. We're not in a flood area. So we're absolutely fine. So those of you that reached out with thoughts and prayers, I do appreciate it. So let's get back to the repair. So first thing, the carburetor came uh, the day before Adalia made landfall. So that's been sitting here. Let's take this bag off. I keep industrial strength bags here because you never know when or what you might need them for. And of course, now I'm gonna have an issue with a stupid knot while you guys are watching me on camera. That's always good. Let's try this over here. Would help if I tried taking it off from the correct side. Now, later this afternoon after this video is done, I am indeed going up to the manufacturer and we are going to be looking at new shops uh, sheds shops shed that I'm going to use as a shop this thing just wants to be a complete dick all right so the rest of this video should be pretty short the inner jet on this carburetor was missing. I spoke to the owner. Really, dude, I should have done this off camera. I spoke to the owner. 
he did not put a new carburetor on it. He pulled the carb apart and attempted to put new gaskets in it. And he crushed the original, the, the gasket, the new gasket he was meant to put in. Got crushed. Oh, that's right. I put all these bolts in. I'm going to take these bolts out real quick and I'll bring you back. But he took the carburetor apart to put new gaskets in it. He did not put the gasket in correctly. He crushed one end of the gasket. And he also lost the top tip of the jet, which is why that thing wouldn't run. Here's the old carburetor, and here's the new one. In El Boxerino, complete. So we're just going to strap this one on. Let me take this cover off, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see. But I'm going to take this cover off here. I just took out the four bolts. And now what we have left... I just put this stuff back together by hand because the storm was coming and I didn't know I mean if we took a direct hit with a category two or three which is what it would have been when it hit us uh, we get flooding with heavy rains here just temporary flooding flash floods but anyway I put this stuff back together just so it wouldn't get lost that's all so all we're going to do Take the new carburetor and the gaskets. The only gasket that's important, I say that people get upset with me, is the one that goes against the manifold between the carburetor and the intake manifold because that you do not need, you do not want air being sucked in because the carburetor just effectively mixes air with fuel and makes that mixture correct so if you're sucking in air the mixture will be off the machine won't run correctly so make sure that you put your fuel intake nozzle out in the correct direction make sure everything else is good I'm going to put my Linkages back on. This is always how it is. You close up the shop, you put stuff away. And the first job back is always a pain in the butt. In this case, we have this little white plug that's in here that often comes in these. And it takes up too much space that's what it's for and I can't get the linkage in there so let me grab a pair of pliers and get that out of ow, get that out of the way now when you take that little plastic plug out of there some linkages are thicker than others so make sure it won't go in first when you take it out it probably will have a little extra flex and movement that's perfectly fine it's a throttle on a carburetor, throttle linkage. Just make sure that it's not so loose that it's going to uh, pop out of the hole on you, that's all. But in my case, it wouldn't even go on. What is going on with this fucking thing? In my case, it wouldn't even go on. Oh, okay. I need to be on the other side here. This is the other linkage. It goes through here. It goes like that, so it's going to come up from underneath and get put into this slot right here. Let me go on the other side and put this thing on. Make sure that your spring goes in its hole. In my case, having the bag on here to protect everything and keep water from going into the motor 
has also it was wrapped around the spring and linkage so they're kind of out of shape at the moment that's what I'm trying to fix right now there we go and then once I have this up in place then I will take my choke lever put it back where it's supposed to be it just goes in a slot on the housing there we go I would normally not be doing it from this side or this position but I'm trying to let you guys be able to see what's going on makes it awkward but I guess that's life now once that's in place that's it now I'm just gonna get the right sockets and tighten that down and I'll bring you right back because I'm not staying up from in front of the camera I need to be close so I can get to it okay now all I have to do is put my elbow back on which is this, there's only one way for it to go on. It goes over like that. Don't forget to hook up your rebreather hose. And then. Just put your nuts back on. Hook up your rebreather hose. I'm trying to, I'm not being able to stay out from in front of the camera. I. Have, I've watched millions of videos and there are tons of makers out there that are much better at filming than me and I can't figure out what the hell they use because they'd be able to zoom you right in and show you what the hell's going on and still not be in the way of the shot but I'll figure it out in the meantime you just gotta watch it the way I make it now once that's on before I put my top back on, I gotta go get the fuel tank. I just wanna put that on real quick. Now normally, I don't trust fuel that comes in a machine from the owner. They always say, oh, I just put gas in there. And to them they did, but in actuality it was six months ago. But in this case, he brought it to me because he attempted to rebuild the carburetor and it didn't work. So I know that he was just recently messing with this. And because he changed the spark plug, thinking that was the issue, which it normally isn't. And everything else that he tried to do to this thing, I know that this fuel is brand new. But remember, if you're not sure, always just replace the fuel. Clean out the fuel tank, replace the fuel. It's very easy to do. I thought this just pushed in place. Maybe I'm putting it on backwards, dumbass. There we go. Now it just pushes in place. Make sure that the fuel line is clear of the frame. Everything's where it's supposed to be. And that's what holds the tank on. These little snappers are, uh, <laughs> they are what they are. So any adjustments to the carburetor will have to be done after the fact. This little intake elbow has to be clipped. It's got an O-ring. And you just push it into your top cover make sure you don't break it it's only plastic I'm gonna throw these bolts in and then we're gonna see if this thing will start all right we got another big old thunder bumper coming so I gotta make this quick it looks like everything's back together the brake is on over here I'm putting it in the choke position because it hasn't been started in a while the key needs to be on in the start position so we have electricity, 
I'm not one to mess around before I turn the camera on, so I literally have no idea what's going to happen. The tank's been on for a few minutes, so the carburetor should be full. I don't know, what do you give the odds of this thing starting? I say 90% within the first five pulls. Let's find out. thing is loud it sounds great it's running uh, the smoking is more than likely moisture and whatnot that got on it during the hurricane something's just burning off the outside of the muffler it looks like some oil there it may not have been started in a while the thing that concerns me is when I moved the throttle what you heard was the chill okay the throttle popped out so that's going to be an issue i had to take that stupid white plug out so what i'm going to have to do is take this cover back off and bend the end of that stupid linkage so that it stays on better so i guess you'll probably want to see that too sometimes when you're dealing with stuff like this this happens that linkage was too big to go into the carburetor so I took the white plug out which is just a little slug and stay there of course when I did it made the hole too big and now I have to modify it to make it work sometimes you can take a slightly larger drill bit and you can drill it but in this case when I looked at it it looked to me like a drill bit there wasn't enough room so let me show you what happened I take this back out of the tripod and show you here's the problem that the linkage just popped right out of that hole so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pliers and I'm gonna try and bend that a different way so that it, it becomes a, a Z bend instead of a hook I don't like those hooks anyway okay so I took and I made a Z bend on the end of that and it really should be back just a little bit more so I'm gonna straighten this up just a bit and now I've got a Z bend so it won't push off. I'll put that cover on, we'll start it back up.